Panama Canal. Um, one of the little vignettes I find when I do this is the aircraft in the sky I thought was very interesting. And in doing research on it, I found there were three pilots flying during that time uh, at the exhibition, exposition. And two of them were in little pusher planes. One of the pilots actually crashed and was very well known because he did not survive. But this is a full fuselaged amphibian aircraft flown by a gentleman from Coulter's home county, County Antrim in Ireland. His name was Alan Lockhead. And a few years later, he changed his name to Alan Lockheed. At this time, he was giving $5, $5 plane rides around the bay. And I have his business card and a photo of his amphibious aircraft uh, posted beneath this. I had to put it in somewhere, because that's why I do this. <laughs> Behind you, again, we're in a theme here called Around the Bay. We have a couple of beautiful yachting pieces. This is, again, another painting of a John Barnison vessel. That is Captain Barnison's personal yacht, the Westward. A William Garden design built over at Stone Boat Yard in Oakland. Again, another beautiful day for a sail in San Francisco. Tamil Pius in the background. To the left is somewhat earlier. This is. Vessels off Angel Island, still trying to, I challenge you all to read the name on the bow of the foreground schooner. It's there, but I've been unable to determine who it is, but it's pretty sure that this is a Matthew Turner vessel. It just follows his design. All of the vessels are wearing the burgee, it appears, of the old Pacific Yacht Club in Sausalito that is, hasn't been there for almost a century. So that helps us date that uh, painting as well. And very idyllic in conception, a very nice yachting portrait. These two paintings showed the same location. The W.A. Bull Shipyard, 1909, is really fascinating to me. It shows there's a gang coppering the uh, sailing vessel, scow schooner. This is the Oakland Estuary. Guys on horseback, guys carrying lumber, probably a steam schooner going up in the background. Same year, the Moore Shipbuilding Company purchased the yard. And this is Moore Shipbuilding in 1919 during World War II, called Wartime, where the yard has gone through an immense evolution here to, uh, this was done to commemorate the wartime output during World War I. This painting also became the final uh, painting in the mural series that are down at the Merchant Exchange Bank. So this is the, the Merchant Exchange building, excuse me. But this is the final uh, panel in that series, which we'll get to in just a moment. The next painting over here, there's a long story behind it. This is actually not the original. We tried everything we could to get the original for the exhibition. It's called Burning of the Blue Light. Its significance is this was Coulter's favorite. And Coulter considered this to be his masterpiece, the ultimate expression of hope in times of adversity. The blue light is a cost and light signal. It's an eight second, very brilliant flare that's, uh, shot, that's held. It never leaves the pistol, the flare pistol. You hold it in your hand, burns for eight seconds. It's your last chance to be seen. Again, very contrasting, very, the light in this is just amazing. So again, it's just a very fascinating story and the fact that Coulter had this painting in almost every exhibit uh, from the time he painted it until about 1928. Tom may be able to add a little bit more comment. Well, uh, if you've heard my uh, presentation, you heard me talk about how this was considered to be the family treasure or the family insurance policy. The painting was kept in the family from the time he painted it until 1928. I think it was significant that in 1928, his uh, eldest, his only daughter, got married, and he felt that she was then off on her own, and he could sell the painting, which he did, and he used the proceeds to go to Ireland for one last visit with his family. And so the painting was sold and, uh, and left the area. Unfortunately, we can't get it back, but uh, we had the. Uh, picture of the painting in the family as a uh, small photograph, black and white photograph, which was then hand tinted by William A. Coulter. 
And I think this is a composite, am I right, of the... The original is at the Merchant Marine Academy in Kings Point, New York. And we went to great lengths to get a photograph, or actually a transparency, of that particular painting. And we used the comp, but the painting has been not taken care of very well. It is very dark and dirty. So I used a combination of the family photograph that Tom had and the image that we shot to create this, just because the image was absolutely essential that it be represented, at least, in this exhibition. But that's the first one we've seen that is not an original. I think he considered this his most important painting. We're going to have a little bottleneck here. As you go by, you'll see a painting of the San Francisco city front with a four-masted bark and a painting that is attributed to William Coulter of the Cliff House. There is a lot of Coulter in this painting, but it also appears to me it could be by a student. But I see his hand in here. I think he had something to do with it, but I'm not sure that this is entirely Coulter's work. Here there are three moonlight views. Uh, again, we can't do this, I guess, as a group, but you'll see on the left, I'm sorry, two moonlight views, one of Angel Island and one which is the Pacific Mail Steamship Dock. The Pacific Mail Dock is also interesting because way in the background, directly under the moon, you will see Long Pier in Oakland, which was the Long Commercial Wharf. We can also know this, we know this is Pacific Mail Steamship because of the position. Can, can we hold up? Yeah, I was trying to figure out how to do this. The layout wasn't designed for tour groups. <laughs> the uh, central painting on this wall, again, it's just a moonlight view of the Pacific Mail steamship dock. But the uniqueness of this painting is this one is part of the catalog of the 1874 San Francisco Art Association exhibition. This is the earliest known culture painting that was exhibited. So this is Coulter as a professional artist, finally, 1874, uh, exhibiting his work at the San Francisco Art Association. The next painting is unique because it's another very interesting vantage point. This is looking into, into the bay, past Black Point on the right, or Fort Mason, with the Van Ness Street Pier, uh, which is the only uh, painted view I've ever seen of the Van Ness Pier. So that makes that kind of unique because of the uh, perspective that culture has put on it. But again, it shows a what I call a mast and a half or one of the working schooners that pretty much jumped from port to port all up and down the Pacific coast. Directly across is one of our finds. This was a painting that was in absolutely horrendous condition when we found it. It had been stored. It was purchased out of a country club at one point, and then from what I understand, it had been in an attic for something like 20 years. The frame was in a couple of hundred pieces. The painting itself needed some substantial restoration. Our conservator, Jackie Williams, did an absolutely magnificent job bringing it back. And again, it is uh, based on one of the murals, the coming home mural that is in the Merchants Exchange building downtown. But uh, we are quite pleased to have been able to bring this one back and probably give it another century of life. Sure. Jackie. Is Jackie here? <laughs> Jackie went through every painting you see, made sure it was clean, made sure it was stable, did free repairs for all the owners, and did, has done just an absolutely amazing job for us. But that's an example of her work. And you have paintings, she has business cards available. <laughs> 
Then we're in a little bit of a bottleneck. This painting is fascinating. We went back and forth trying to get that location. It's identified on the back as Santa Cruz Wharf. It's not Santa Cruz. We proved that. It's been identified as Long Pier, Long Wharf, Commercial Wharf, Long Pier. But it is definitely the Long Bridge. And uh, someone here at the Park Service is the one who finally got the information that positively identifies it. Long Bridge was built across Mission Bay so that people from the city could get up to the Potrero uh, <clears throat> and Hunters Point districts to work, but then it became much more popular as a recreational area. It had places the yacht clubs would visit there, the rowing clubs were based. We have the Pioneer Rowing Club flag right there uh, on the uh, building to the far right. The, uh, saltwater baths extended right over the water. So the information that we have on it positively identify this finally as being Long Bridge. A generic clipper below there, it's a very early clipper, again carrying single topsails instead of the double topsails. My guess and total speculation is that it would probably be a vessel like the Memnon, which was the first clipper to come to San Francisco during the gold rush. But again, nothing to say that positively, just kind of a feeling but uh, it very well portrays the very sharp uh, entry, the sharp clipper bow designs and the towering rigs that the clipper ship uh, carried. Another very idyllic view north. Uh, again, this is one of Coulter's favorite views. Uh, one of the best vistas in San Francisco with, uh, again, Alcatraz Island, Tamil Pius. We have a whaler coming in. Uh, tug coming up alongside, two scow schooners to the right. Just again, a very idyllic uh, presentation. From this vantage point, probably somewhere around North Beach, this area was always just full of ships, shipping activity, with again, a very spectacular backdrop from which to uh, portray his subjects. Marcus, the lady earlier asked about the military fort on Alcatraz Island. I, I can tell you it opened in 1859. It was one of three original military forts. The uh, other two, one was uh, at Fort Mason and the other was at Fort Point. In those early days, they could shoot a cannonball about a, a mile and a half or two miles. I told you somebody at the Park Service would know. This painting is interesting. This is a uh, Outcropping called the Needles. It's still under the north end of the Golden Gate Bridge. Again, we're looking across Golden Gate Straits to Fort Winfield Scott. And I can't help but uh, think as I'm looking at it, Coulter was painting it going, wow, this would be a good place to build a bridge. <laughs> we have the bark Drum Burton. Again, with shipping activity off the Embarcadero. We have a hay schooner to the right. And again, this was another John Barnison owned vessel. To the right, as you come around the corner, are reproductions of all of the murals in the Merchant Exchange building. The, and the Merchant Exchange built a new facility in 1903. It burned in 1906. Uh, it was completely gutted. They decided they hired a young architect named Julia Morgan to redesign the interior of the building. And she engaged Coulter to paint these five murals, which uh, downtown they are uh, 16 feet high, 18 feet wide. The little tiny medallions you'll see in the one photo there aren't that tiny. Those are four feet across. It is absolutely spectacular to stand in that room. Because of the way they were painted, they were painted on canvas and then they're fastened to the walls with white lead and varnish and Venice turpentine. They were impossible to remove. And at one point, they were actually plastered over for quite a few years until the building was remodeled. And one of the workmen got up there and said, hey, there's some pictures back here. And in the 1960s, these were uncovered again and restored. Another very beautiful view, the upper view here, is again Raccoon Straits. This is Ayala Cove on Angel Island. We have Belvedere without a single house on it. And it looks like the Tiburon Inlet there. Couple of felucas pulling up for lunch. But again, just uh, Coulter at his best. These are very unique. These were actually painted for a friend of his who was working at the Merchant Exchange building at the time he was doing the murals. Uh, they are done canvas, laid on uh, wood shingles or wood panels. 
Uh, again, unsigned, but undoubtedly these are the hand of William Coulter. Next is uh, another view of Sausalito, what was likely became Caledonia Street. Looking north towards Corte Madera, we also have uh, one of the trains of the North Pacific Coast Railway, which was responsible for establishing the ferry terminal at the end of uh, Sausalito there, which of course caused the city to grow. Again, another very nice early view. This is another version of the coming home theme and the William F. Babcock. This was commissioned by uh, J.B. Levinson who uh, resurrected Home Fire and Marine Insurance Company around 1917. And we just found this not too long ago on eBay, but this is one of the actual advertising signs. They used this as the company's trademark. It was on their insurance certificates. And again, their trademark logo here, it shows the, again, a version of the vessel. Also in 1922, a stamp was issued. The uh, Postal Service was looking for the right image to portray uh, San Francisco Bay, and they chose the Coulter painting that we have here uh, to use for that. And the stamp was issued on May 1st, 1923, simultaneously in Washington, D.C. and San Francisco. This is another one of my off-the-wall research vignettes. It's a very nice portrait of a scow schooner, probably up uh, off Mare Island near Vallejo, Carquinez Straits in the background. I believe this is Venetia. What caught my eye was a very strange looking vessel that is in the background here. This appears a little bit to be a, an aircraft carrier. However, the painting is dated 1911, and there were no aircraft carriers. However, in 1911, they took the heavy cruiser USS Pennsylvania, built a special platform on its after, after deck to see if a pilot named Eugene Ely could land successfully an aircraft on the deck of a warship here in San Francisco Bay. And what Coulter has done, just inadvertently, he captured what the Pennsylvania looked like for a very brief four-month period uh, for the experiment of the first time anyone flew on or off the deck of a military vessel. Below that's a very kind of pensive image of graveyard of ships up in Carquina Straits up Port Costa. Uh, again, it's, the, it's another Coulter tribute to the end of sail or the end of the sailing era. How are we doing on time? Excuse me? The building on the left here with the... I've been trying to identify that. It looks like a rope works to me, but I'm not sure. I do not know. I have been unsuccessful in identifying it. However, they're fitting out because we have steamers and sailing vessels there. So I believe it's maritime oriented, but I have been unable to identify it. This last section is called Other Harbors. It features places that Coulter visited or studied, uh, either on vacation, uh, not vacation, but as, as journeys. Um, we know that he was studying in Denmark with Wilhelm Melby. This is one of my favorite paintings in the exhibition. This is the Kronberg Straits in Denmark. This is Elsignor or Elsinore Castle, Hamlet's Castle here on the left, looking across the Straits at Sweden. The vessel in the foreground with the H and the red stripe on the sail, that's a Helsignor pilot vessel. Again, we have an immense amount of shipping heading out to the Baltic. We have the pulling boats and square riggers. Uh, very similar to the first painting in the exhibit in the City of Ships section, but this just a magnificent composition. These two, these three paintings were also painted in Denmark. We have a Danish warship here, a steam frigate firing a salute, salute from both port and starboard batteries, and then a vessel at sea. These are just, I love these little guys. They're just, they're small for cultures, but they're just a beautiful little pair. And then we have the uh, Helsignor pilot station, which is almost where it's supposed to be in relation to this painting. <laughs> it would be off to here on the right. This uh, building was actually torn down in 1910, is no longer there, but probably painted close to the same time that the uh, Kronberg Straits was. 
two views of London where Coulter also studied looking for European techniques. These are both, you'll see St. Paul's Cathedral as one of the central design elements. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a structure called Cleopatra's Needle that has nothing to do with Cleopatra, but was brought, there are two of those that were brought from uh, Egypt. One of them is in Central Park in New York. The other was, a, was erected here on the banks of the Thames River. And Londoners just nicknamed it Cleopatra's Needle after it was erected. It's interesting, this second view also has Waterloo Bridge. This is a nocturnal and it's pretty much through this arch right here. We see a similar river tug, only this one has a mast on it uh, in the image, but it's very interesting to compare the two and know that this view is taken through that arch. This is the five master <coughs> Barkentine monitor off Tatouche Island and Tatouche Light up in Cape Flattery in Washington State. Again, it is just a very, very precise uh, starboard quarter view of one of the last vessels of this type sailing uh, on the west coast. The small painting in the upper right here is the only view I was able to find in New York Harbor. The owner had this for nearly 30 years thinking it was San Francisco, but that is definitely uh, Castle William on Garden Island in New York. He's actually standing on the battery looking south. This structure or this fort is actually horse horseshoes or a word like that uh, shaped uh, and is open on the other end. So we have, we know the exact perspective. He is standing in Battery Park looking south. This is another interesting painting that was, uh, came just as a, uh, as a Russian brig. But this is a Russian sealer. It's flying the Russian ensign. We have a version of Mount Edgecombe off Sitka. But the house flag identifies this as belonging to the Hutchinson Coal Company. And the Hut Hutchinson and Coal built out the uh, Alaska American, bought out the Alaska American Company, uh, which was all the Russian holdings in Alaska, pretty much the entire state of Alaska. They owned it for one year. And they were, again, they were a San Francisco company. All that's left of Hutchinson Coal today is Nordstrom's. Nordstrom's is a Hutchinson Coal company. But this is the brief period when America very first owned, or an American concern, very first owned part of the Alaskan uh, enterprise. And behind us is one of the first Coulters I ever saw. It used to hang in the Mermaid Bar in Honolulu for many years. It's uh, currently part of the collection of the Bishop Museum. That's uh, Honolulu Harbor. The only identified vessel is the steamer Sherman coming out uh, beautifully framed by a rainbow with Honolulu, the, uh, the Pali and the Nuuanu Valley is in the background. Of course, Diamond Head to the far right. I'm running out of words. This painting of the ship Wildwood is very significant to me because of all the shipbuilding that went on on the west coast. I didn't know this before. There are only three full rig ships ever built on the entire west coast. That's one of them, and that's the first one. That was built by Meigs up in Washington State. Again, she's shown off uh, Cape Flattery, Tatouche Light, heading out. She was here in San Francisco quite a bit. But its significance, again, as this was the very first Pacific-built ship. Now, there's a lot of schooners, brigantines, barkentines. We built all kinds of vessels. But we didn't have the strong enough timber to build these big ones to last. So that was uh, one I discovered kind of late in the exhibition uh, process. And I'm very pleased that we're able to show it here because, again, it's a very unique portrait. This is another view looking across the main ship channel towards Tamil Pius. Again, we have, it's one of Coulter's favorite views, our same little tug we see here all the time, but a very smart looking 
brigantine heading out there, uh, heading out the gate. Just, I like this picture the first time I saw it, and I just wanted to include it very much. What was the timber that was used? Mostly Douglas fir, which Douglas doesn't, fir. doesn't, that's what we had a lot of up north. It makes great for masts and decks, but keeping a hull together is. In the east, they could use white oak uh, and live oak, live oak frames. So the framing is very important, but the vessels built here just didn't last as long. I think no wooden sailing ships ever lasted that long. And ask the guys around the park how hard it is just to keep this, the metal ones afloat. Carquinez Strait, again at one point, this was the gateway to all of the Central Valley uh, shipping that came out, the agriculture. Again, this is another version of one of the murals in the Merchant Exchange Building. You know, at one point, there were almost, I think, four miles of commercial docks, you know, along Carquinez Straits, you know, in Port Costa. And the final view is just this beautiful one close to Sausalito. It's close to, I'm sure it's close to William Coulter's home on 4th Street and probably something that was a fairly common scene of we have a scow schooner just ghosting along, crew going back to the vessels after a night on shore. And pretty much this image is the last one in the exhibit. I know I've skipped a lot and uh, Best I could do off the top of my head. I hope you learned a little bit. I am available for questions. I work much better one on one than taking questions from a group. And Tom is here as well. So we thank you all for coming. The exhibit's going to be here for six months. It's up to you to let people know what you can. My, my thanks to Marcus for this wonderful tour. Uh, I, I really have to tell you all, and some of you are employees in the Park Service, and wandering around in the back somewhere is Kate Richardson, the superintendent of the park. Kate, would you? Hi. <laughs> Kate is responsible for allowing us to put this exhibit up. As this progressed, it seems like we systematically tried to violate every rule the park had. I want to assure you it was not intentional, and they gently and sensitively helped us along with mounting this, and the Park Service really is to be commended for what they're doing here. And again, I want to put in a little plug. We realize that I think this is the first art exhibit that they've had of this magnitude. But the important thing, and the thing we must remember, is saving our maritime heritage, and that's what this park is doing, and that's, this is how they're doing it. We can't see all these beautiful ships with their sails up, moving gracefully across the bay, but Coulter did a little bit of this. And it's a park that's really preserving this for all time. And I hope you'll take this opportunity to also uh, help the park along in any way possible. Uh, they've been very understanding with us, and we're very proud of the exhibit and the job that Marcus has done. But uh, it's those old ships out there that really need to be saved, those vessels that represent San Francisco as it used to be, and I hope you'll help along there. I have just one or two things to say. Uh, first of all, if you have questions about the family portraits and the pictures over here, I'll be glad to answer them. That's William A. Coulter for the most part and his family, and it's kind of fun because uh, some of his personality comes through there, some of it comes through in the painting. I particularly like this posed picture down here, painting the uh, the oil that hangs over here with the uh, San Francisco Exposition of 1915, the Pan Pacific Exposition. I think it's uh, interesting Coulter posed that for publicity purposes. But uh, thank you all for your support. I apologize for the lack of catalogs today. There was a printer's error, and we will find a way to get you each a catalog. And you won't have to buy it at a discount. It will be made free to you. So thank you.
And while you're all here, I would like to apologize to every single one of the rangers that I made late getting out of here for the last month. <laughs> <laughs>